So if you're dealing with digestive issues that don't seem to go away no matter what steps that you take, in this video I'm going to help you understand the correlation between dental health problems and some digestive issues that can go on. We might find out that 4 out of 5 dentists don't agree after all. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So if we want to figure out if dental issues might be contributing to any digestive symptoms that we're experiencing, we first need to understand that there's a variety of underlying causes that can create these digestive symptoms. But when we're looking at things like burping and bloating and constipation and acid reflux, and maybe nausea or food just kind of sits there like a rock in your stomach for hours at a time. A lot of these can be caused by a bacterial overgrowth in the stomach or in the small intestine here known as SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So when we're looking at this connection, we want to look for signs of a bacterial overgrowth that might be taking place in the stomach or in the small intestine. And if there's a bacterial overgrowth in the stomach, it's often because there was not enough stomach acid there to acidify the stomach properly and fry those bacteria as they came in the system on, on some food that we ate. And that's a very common thing to see today for someone not to be making enough stomach acid. So if this bacteria comes in and sets up camp in the stomach, it's often going to make its way down to this small intestine here. So if this is new information for you, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on 10 early signs of SIBO so you can get an idea of what kind of signs might show up if you have some type of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth going on. But if a person already knows that they have this kind of problem happening, they'll take steps to wipe these bad guys out and then it might keep coming back. So another thing when we're looking at do I have dental problems creating this, do these symptoms keep coming back? Do you take steps to wipe out these bad guys, but then a month or two later it will keep coming back? So this is something that happened to me when I lost my voice for eight years as I was taking steps to wipe out bacteria in the stomach that were creating an acid reflux problem for me. And they were creating all this gas and pressure that was pushing that reflux back up. So I would take steps to wipe them out and then my voice would improve for a month or so and then it would just come back. So what I found out is that I had issues up here. I had an infection in a tooth in a root canal that I had done long, long ago. And it kind of, they left a pocket in there when they did that root canal. So bacteria got in there and set up camp and when they were having a party in my mouth. But it would basically, that infection would feed from my mouth down to my esophagus, back into my stomach all day long, every day. So of course it was going to reestablish the problem again because the source of the problem had not been taken care of. So there's a lot of reasons a person can get some type of infection in their mouth. I'm not a dentist. I'm also not a doctor. I'm not giving you any dental or medical advice here. But I want to share what I experienced because for most people that are dealing with some type of bacterial overgrowth, it just came in on the food that they ate. Their stomach acid was not there to kill it off and it just came in and set up camp. That's going to be the scenario for most people. But for some folks, a dental infection could be creating the problem or bringing it back again and again. So the most common issues that can create an issue where there's a really strong infection in the mouth someplace is if somebody has known root canals, like, oh yeah, I had a root canal 14 years ago. That could be a possible sign of, of some issue that could be there. Or known extractions where, yeah, I had 14 molars pulled when I was a kid, even though I think there's only four or something. But People have a lot of teeth pulled out and the problem is it appears that the way that a lot of mainstream dentists work when they're doing a root canal or doing some type of extraction is that they'll seal those pockets up but they don't seal them up in a way that restricts bacteria from getting in and setting up camp and creating an infection there in the mouth that can last for years or decades. So if you're a person that's having these digestive symptoms that keeps coming back after you've taken steps to wipe out these infections, we want to look, do we have known root canals? Do we have known extractions? Or are we having current dental discomfort that can indicate that there might be some type of dental infection going on? Another possibility is if you have some type of sinus symptoms happening. I had this old root canal that was there and that had an infection in it that was creating problems, was feeding down to my stomach. But I also had a sinus infection that was a chronic infection that did not show me symptoms on a daily basis. 
but that infection was also feeding down my esophagus. So that's a possible thing to think about if you're dealing with these recurring digestive problems. So if you feel like these things here are a possibility for you and you keep having these digestive issues come back again and again, even after you treat them and you feel like you wipe the stuff out. One thing that can be important is did you restore the stomach acid function? A lot of people will wipe out a, a bacterial overgrowth, but they don't take any steps to restore that stomach acid function, so the door is always open. So more bacteria just comes in on the food that we eat and they set up camp again. So if that's new information for you, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on four steps to improve low stomach acid. So you can look into that and see if that's something that might be appropriate for you. But if you're getting these recurring things and you don't feel like you're having symptoms of low stomach acid, but they keep coming back and there's a possibility that it could be a dental issue, the things that you want to look into and really research, because again, I'm not telling you what to do. I don't know your scenario. I can't give you the answer for you, but you want to research things like oil pulling. That's very popular for people that have dental infections. They kind of put like maybe some coconut oil in their mouth and just kind of swish it around for 20 minutes and the antimicrobial properties of that coconut oil can really improve the hygiene of that mouth area. Now this step was not enough to fix the problem for me. That oil pulling didn't get down into that pocket where my root canal was where the infection had set up camp. So I don't feel like this works in every scenario, but it is very effective for a lot of scenarios. But the real step is you want to look in your area and see if you can find any biological dentists. And this is just a pocket of dentists that learn things a little bit differently. And they learn some methods that seem to be a little bit more effective at keeping bacteria out of the mouth when the dental work is done. So if you can look for a biological dentist in your area, you can go in and they might be able to let you know, yeah, I can see that there's an infection here and here's some steps we can take to take care of that issue. So for a lot of people, this won't be something that you'll be able to fix on your own. I was not able to fix the issue on my own. I needed to get a biological dentist to help me clear that infection out and then fill in that cavity so that it wasn't open for more bad guys to come in and set up camp again. But what's important is to understand the possibility. I just wanted to make this video to share that this is a possible problem up here. This can create trouble either in the mouth or up here in the sinuses that can feed right down. Remember, there's a tube. It's a little canal. Come on down, guys. That can feed right down in the stomach and into the intestinal tract. So I just don't want to see other people get stuck like I did where I was treating this over and over and over again, didn't understand that the main problem was up here. So this won't be everybody's answer, but for the few people that it is, this can be a life-changing information here. So if you want to hear more about my story and what happened with me losing my voice and the steps I took to correct that, you can jump over and check out our video on how I lost my voice for eight years. I can't wait to hear about your results.